Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Well, guys, we were just talking about the uh, Ica stones, and you know, there's there's more and more of these crazy things that get dismissed by scientists. And you know, obviously, so many of the scientists are on the payroll um, with the powers that be in order to keep us kind of in the dark. Because I mean, as, as we were just talking about yesterday in one of the videos. Looks like we need a whole new uh, set of um, physics you know, to explain how the universe works because everything we've been told is basically inaccurate. And you got to wonder what's our real history, our real truth, timelines, years, everything. It's just, uh, it's just such a cover up. You know, I, I, I personally think there's a massive, massive cover up going on. And you got to ask yourself, why? You know, what would change if we knew the truth? Why? What would change? What do you think would change, Cindy? Oh, my gosh. A lot of people would lose their jobs. There would be serious chaos. They would have to rewrite all of the textbooks, you know, in, in science class. Um, yeah, heads would roll. <laughs> yeah, I guess they would. There would be a lot of people that would be irritated to say the least so we're going to look at this this is another case that they're writing off scientists mainstream scientists are saying it's just a hoax it's just a hoax and here you see the akambaro figures a collection of thousands of figurines actually like over thirty thousand. that uh yeah sure these these are all just an elaborate hoax who's going to create thirty thousand figurines to make a hoax to go, haha, April Fools, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think so, especially uh, because they, they didn't end up really selling these things. This, these were discovered in Akambaro in Mexico. They were discovered in July of 1944 by a German immigrant and hardware merchant named Waldemar Julesrud. And this is where they are right now in his museum by same name. And this is in Mexico, and they are on display. So he was an amateur archaeologist. And according to accounts, he stumbled upon the artifacts while riding his horse in the Akambaro area. In the following seven years, the farmer and his assistants discovered over 32,000 ceramic figurines near El Toro, as well as the Chivo Mountains on the other side of town. And so he hired a local farmer to dig up the remaining figures, paying him for each object he found. And as you can see some right here, and again, 32,000, 32,000. Boy, if, if that's not <laughs> one of the more elaborate hoaxes in history. The figurines are said by some to resemble dinosaurs there again. And, you know, it's like, well, I mean, it, it, were, were these kids play toys, you know, just making up crazy imaginary monsters? Or was this something different? I mean, were they actually making, uh, making figurines of what they've seen, what they've actually seen themselves um, or also have heard of in legends? Interesting, you know, there's dozens of recognizable dinosaurs. There's people with dinosaurs. There's even flying saucers. How about that? Flying saucers, too. As we look at some of these figurines. And they also are representative of people from all over the world, including Egyptians, Sumerians, and bearded Caucasians. So what does that say about our society? And there's, there's one in there, too, that looks uh, just like a gray alien again as well. So attempts have been made to date the figures using thermoluminescence dating. The earliest results from tests done when it was in its infancy suggested a date of around 2500 B.C. However, later tests contradicted these findings. And, uh, you know, so again, we don't really, really know. In 1976, uh, Gary W. Carvio and Mark C. Hahn attempted to date 20 Akinbaro figures using TL dating based on the degree of signal regeneration found in remeasured samples. They estimated that the figures tested had been fired at approximately 450 degrees Celsius and 650 degrees Celsius. 
approximately 30 years prior to 1969. So, you know, back in 1930s. And despite the huge numbers of figurines, they were all composed of different kinds of clay, including black clay from Oaxa. And uh, Jules Rude never sold any of the figurines. And of course, it was dismissed as a hoax by the mainstream as we look at some figurines of humanoid figures. But we would expect that. And it's interesting enough that you have the Chupacaro collection on the left, which is accepted by science as real. And on the right here, you have the Waldemar Jules Root collection found seven miles away at about the same age, ignored by science because of the contents, because of what's in there. There's a little flying saucer, by the way, and another flying saucer. Sure looks like it, doesn't it? Wouldn't you say? It totally looks like a flying saucer to me. It's pretty amazing what they've made. I wonder if it's like an ancient Toys R Us thing that because there's so many of them, it would keep like a small town employed for about 10 years. Exactly, yeah. And, and what would be the point? What would be the point? Look, another person riding a Triceratops. And we have Brontosauruses and we have all sorts of different beings. How about, you know, how about different... Uh, type of people, including uh, some beings that look a lot like the Anunnaki with the Sumerian gods with the beards just like that too. You know, it's it's just really, really curious. And um, so here you see, such did not prevent Joel's Rood and his followers from investigating the suspected age of the discoveries. And so, it was, and they were right. The figurines were authentic, and the age was determined by the Isotopes Inc. Company in New Jersey by radiocarbon dating, as well as the University of Pennsylvania by TL dating to be in a range of three to 7,000 years old. But as usual with artifacts that don't fit into prevailing historiography, uh, the establishment continues to stubbornly ignore the existence of the figurines, of course, and that is him the man that made that discovery. So, you know, what's up with living alongside dinos? And, you know, I'm going to have to dig into it deeper because I do remember like a long time ago when I was <laughs> pretty much a kid um, reading a story about how there was an African tribe that said that there still were dinosaurs down in Africa um, like back in the 1920s, 1930s. And uh, I wonder if I could find that again. It's probably been wiped by Google. Um, so it's it's fascinating. And how is it possible that people from that time could portray dinosaurs? Some thought that there might still be real wandering dinosaurs in Mexico 5,000 years ago. Others believe the first people of that Indian tribe might have descended from the time of the dinosaurs, according to our modern science 65 million years ago. However, if you consider that the people and the figures were probably not earthlings, but extraterrestrial visitors, then other explanations are more obvious, you know, such as maybe they have dinosaurs on other planets. Maybe everything, uh, say in the Cindy, I get the feeling that we are in a fishbowl. You know, we're, or you could view it as a fishbowl and there's people watching us or an ant farm. You know, are we truly an alien ant farm? You know, I my daughter's had dreams that she was inside of a giant zoo. So I, I do think that we're being watched. So if you could put your perspective um, up high enough at the perspective of those watching us, um, maybe we could figure some things out. But yeah, I definitely think that we're, we're in a... Um, you know, an ant farm. Yeah, it, it, alien ant farm. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you look at the movie uh, uh, Dark um, Dark City, you know, it, it ends up being that everything is just an alien experiment. And so it's interesting, this statement right here, since some negative alien races, such as the reptilians, and uh, Anunnaki are born fighters, these prehistoric monsters undoubtedly could have been a great challenge to hunt. Is that what they were doing? Doing a little hunting? That sounds a lot like Predator and uh, Predator versus Alien. You know, that's, it's interesting, guys. What do you think about this? You know, I, 
I realize this is very similar to the last video, but you know, it's just like, here's another example. And we're seeing, if you look at it, I mean, we're seeing again, you know, a dinosaur eating a person and he, he looks like he was caught by surprise. Kind of got his eyes bugged out. It's the dinosaurs going into his neck there. So, you know, and that looks clearly, you know, of course the size wouldn't make any sense. Um, depending, of course, on the type of dinosaur it was, but very much these things look a lot like dinosaurs. And then we got some cone heads. Look at that. So, and we've seen the elongated heads as we were talking about. There's the flying saucer. Perhaps that's some giants mixed in with normal sized beings. Now, doesn't that look like a gray alien wearing a necklace? Looks like he's going to do a little rap dance or something. You know, he's, he's bebop in there. He's ready to get his groove on. He seems happy. He's like ready to get the party started. It looks like this one's already been drinking and partying. Mm -hmm. And these guys can't get up because they've been partying so much. So curious, but man, there, there you go. That's another interesting one. Note the head. We've seen that. It makes me think of uh, Akhenaten and Nefertiti. And that's the museum and the collection. And there, there's a guy hugging his dinosaur. Did you hug your dinosaur today? That could be a bumper sticker. Right. So as always, my friends, uh, thank you for your support. Like, share, subscribe, click the bell. Uh, join us at Patreon or also at Ko-Fi. And thank you guys for keeping the channel going. I look forward to your comments. This is just another elaborate hoax, as the mainstream would want us to think. Or is it more evidence that our reality is not what we were taught? As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.